I would like to introduce Tara Siebert, who's the Quality Improvement Facilitator with the Edmonton North PCN, who along with Dr. Chris Lay will share their CII CPAR experience. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. So good evening, everyone. My name is Tara Siebert, and I am a Quality Improvement Facilitator with the Edmonton North PCN, and I've supported Ideal Medical Center since they opened in January of 2018. I'm here today to share our story about why we were interested in participating in CII CPAR and how our experience has been so far. So first off, allow me to introduce the team from Ideal Medical that are part of our story today. The two family physicians, Dr. Tarek al Shawabka and Dr. Chris Lay, as well as their clinic manager, Tracy Schwenard. The team at Ideal also includes their frontline staff and on-site specialists. Dr. Chris Lay will be representing the clinic today. And for those Edmontonians familiar with the North, a fun fact about the clinic is that it resides in the old Delton IGA space on 82nd Street. Um, I, saw some of the, I saw the renovations and it definitely looks a lot different than it did when it was IGA, I'll tell you that. So now that you've met the team, I'm going to start us off with a personal story about my firsthand experience with informational discontinuity as a patient. A couple of summers ago, I experienced a pathological fracture of the third metacarpal in my left hand. It was a result of mixing an unknown enchondroma and a wild fall during rec soccer, of all things. I had fantastic continuity with my family physician, but despite advocating for communication with my family physician every time I had an encounter outside of my health phone, so the emergency department, x-rays, MRI, surgery, post-surgical consults, it would take a visit or a personal phone call by my family physician to keep her in the loop of what was going on. The constant back and forth was evidence of the structural gaps in our health system infrastructure. It simply did not support a closed loop system of communication. So enter CII CPAR. Chris, why were you interested in participating in CII CPAR? family doctor that has a major role in coordinating care for my patients, CII CPAR let me provide the best information for, to my colleagues, especially those in a different clinical setting, like the emergency department or the hospital. Next slide, please. So at our clinic, we see patients from Poundmaker's Lodge, which is a residential treatment facility located in St. Albert. Patients who attend residential treatment facilities tend to lack primary care and there's usually little to no information from these facilities to guide what is happening for their medical care. My interviews collect pertinent details for future use, such as substance use history, name of their treatment facility, graduation date, and the patient's reported GP if they have one. CII CPAR helped to coordinate care for one of these patients from Poundmaker's Lodge as she became one of my patients. Following her graduation, we titrated her medications and I documented the changes in my net care notes. Her situation unfortunately decompensated and she moved to rural Alberta and I received no notifications of her eMERGE visits and her hospital stays. At one point, I received a phone call to review her treatment plan so she could proceed to another residential treatment facility. Being identified as her primary care physician, helped keep me involved in her care, even when she wasn't being seen directly by me. Now back over to Tara to share some lessons that we learned along the way. Thanks, Chris. So as Chris mentioned, um, we have learned a few lesson lessons along the way that we'd like to share. So first, um, starting with the willing, we, um, we started with who raised their hand and who was willing to give CII CPAR a go. As well, to echo some of Dr. Janet Craig's comments, it was a team sport. There were several teams involved in supporting Ideal Medical Center's participation in CII CPAR. AMA Act provided and continues to provide training, and we have ongoing support from our AMA consultant. The team that I'm part of at the Edmonton North PCN, our Physician Practice Supports Team, has regular CII CPAR huddles with our AMA consultant, and we bounce ideas off each other and are there to support one another. E-Health Support Services was there for support the moment the registration form was submitted and their team has provided support at all stages of participation. And last but not least, our EMR vendor. The team at MicroQuest provided support with data mapping, data validation, as well as helping us resolve any technical issues we encountered with HealthQuest. 
as well. Patience is key. We started small and went forward at a pace that worked for the team. So initially I met with the family physicians and team members at Ideal Medical to introduce CII CPAR and review the flow of data. It was new to me at the time, they weren't shy about asking questions, and they were very patient with me and the process. So both family physicians and the specialists on site agreed to participate in CII CPAR, but we started with onboarding the two family physicians first. Once the family physicians were live, we then brought the specialists on board. Ideal's clinic manager, Tracy, helped to onboard the specialists that work on site to CII. And it was very beneficial that not everyone had to go live at the same time. We moved forward as physicians were ready. It is a flexible process. Next slide, please. So speaking of processes, I want to take a couple of minutes to walk through what getting started looks like. The registration process is where we learned a fair bit and understood how our PCN could better support our clinics interested in participating in CII CPAR. The first step was the submission of a confirmation of participation form to eHealth. This included completing a PIA self-assessment with the clinic team to identify if and what in their PIA needed updating. This tool is a simple questionnaire that gives the clinic guidance if their PIA needs updating and sharing the result with eHealth during implementation helps the clinic move forward. Once the confirmation of participation was submitted to eHealth, an eHealth consultant was assigned to the clinic and worked with myself and the clinic manager, who is also the site liaison, and was the main point of contact and responsible for coordinating signatures. As the practice facilitator, I was copied on all communications. Then the eHealth privacy team was brought in to do a PIA risk assessment, which simply means that they helped the clinic to understand if any updates were required, minor or major, small or large. Ideal Medical's PAIA was current, but our PCN team has since learned that a common minor update clinics need to make to their PIA is to include mandatory privacy breach reporting. This is due to an amendment made to the Health Information Act in August of 2018. So we just want to emphasize, a clinic's PIA does not need to be updated to get started. Regardless of where a clinic is at with their privacy impact assessments, they can get started by submitting a confirmation of participation to eHealth. Next slide, please. So in addition to providing upfront privacy support, we also worked with the clinic on panel process improvement. Their clinic manager and site liaison also took on the role of the CPAR panel administrator. Our first step was to sit down together at the clinic to log into CPAR for the first time and download the demographic mismatch and panel conflict reports. We hit an early stumbling block and struggled a bit with how to log in. So we reached out to the team at eHealth for support and based on that feedback, they, their team has produced a detailed checklist for how to log in. As Leslie mentioned, they've been extremely responsive and helpful throughout this process. Once we were successfully logged into CPAR, we downloaded demographic mismatch reports and conflict reports. We had no demographic mismatches and no conflicts for Dr. Chris Lay's panel, but there were two conflicts for Dr. Tarek al his panel. Their clinic manager and I discussed potential options for addressing the conflicts on Dr. Tarek's panel. I knew our team was meeting with our AMA consultant the following week and told the clinic that I would bring that forward for discussion. Our Edmonton North PCN's Physician Practice Supports team met with our AMA consultant to discuss roles and responsibilities for CII CPAR, and that included a discussion about managing panel conflicts. Next slide, please. We mapped a draft process for managing the panel conflicts, which included utilizing a panel change form created and shared by the Chinook PCN. Brittany, may I ask you to share the link to the panel change form on the chat, please? Next slide, please. While we've learned a lot along the way, those learnings were not without challenges. For example, eHealth notified us of a failed encounter due to a hyphen that was in the field for average BP. Didn't see that coming. So we pulled the charting templates in question and worked with MicroQuest to reformat the fields for BP, which resolved the issue. Nothing like having a little troubleshooting to keep us on our toes. 
Chris, could you please weigh in about some of the challenges you've experienced on your end? Right, so complicated patients sometimes require multiple chart note entries on the same day for conversations with the patient or with consultants or with the pharmacy. Uh, an area for improvement was that only one of those patient encounters on that same day would upload to NetCare. So some of the information that I had inputted would be missing. MicroQuest has been responsive to our feedback and I can confirm that they fixed the issue because um, I just had to deal with that yesterday. Next slide, please. So looking ahead, I requested my primary healthcare panel reports from the HQCA, which includes measures such as panel size, burden of illness, and social deprivation index. By participating in CII CPAR, I asked if CPAR can enhance the data that I have access to. The answer is yes. First, participating in CII CPAR is the most accurate way to validate and share my panel information. Measures in my panel report represents my patients for whom I'm the most responsible provider. Second, I will be informed if patients are no longer on my panel, such as when they are deceased. That information helps my team and me update our EMR and accurately know which patients are due for cancer screening or chronic disease management. Overall, while there is an investment of time and energy up front, CII CPAR is designed to be a low maintenance, highly automated way of enhancing and supporting care. We encourage all of you to sign up.